Hello everyone and welcome to another novel action video. This time it's not going to be the entertaining content of uh, Bismarck and I exchanging some banter or some teaching sailing with the size drive. This is actually going to be a sort of explanation and teaching video about something which is very important for sail ships and that being polars. Now one of the most important things in ships of the era was the rigging they were using. The rigging is the term used to describe how the sails and rigs and the course and everything was set up on the ship. There were very different riggings. There were, um, well, really a lot of them, depending on how many masts the ship had and the sails they were using. Right now, in Naval Action, there are just two different kinds of rigging, actually three but one of them is very close to the others. Uh, the first one is for an aft rigging, which I'm going to explain in a second. The second is a brig snow rigging, and the third is a full square, square sail rigging. And the polars are slightly different between them all. Uh, well, they can be extremely different. I mean, a fore and aft sailor sails, sails and has the polars totally different to those of a ship. So let's take a look at what's an fore and aft ship. This here is a schooner. This is a fore and aft rear ship. You can see it has two masts, but that's a little bit besides the point. You can see it has four jibs in the front. Those are the sails that are hanging from the bowsprit up to the foremast. And that the main sails on both masts are disposed alongside the center of the ship. Now, this is a um, rigging setup which is used in naval action by the yachts, the Lynx, which is a, actually a sooner, and the Cutter, uh, or the Cutter, or however it's said in English. <laughs> I, st I still don't know the pronunciation of that little ship. Anyway, that's fore and aft. I'm going to explain the polar later. But first, this is fore and aft. Let's take a look at some different rigs. This here, it's a brig. Now the brig is a ship which has two masts and has uh, square sails in its masts and also a gaff or spanker uh, hanging from the after uh, mast, which is the main mast. Um, actually, this is a snow rigged brig. You can see it has three jibs, well actually probably has more, but yes, has three in this picture. And one sail hanging from the main mast to the foremast, that's a stay sail. Now, this um, particular rigging is used by the brig in naval action currently. And has widely different polars and um, reactions to the wind than the fore and afters that we saw before. And let's move for to the, well, the final rigging we are going to see in this video. And this is a full ship rigging, a full square ship rigging. Now you can see this setup has three or more masts, actually. All of them use square sails. Uh, there's a spanker behind the missing mast. And there are some jibs uh, between the bowsprit and the foremast. Also, there are a lot of stay sails between, between masts. Now that was the well most common uh, rigging for the big ships of the era, because this rigging was um, very good for open seas where winds didn't change all the time, and uh, was actually pretty, let's say, uh, flexible. So it was probably the most known ship. Most of the ships you see in 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 pictures or you see in, in movies, uh, usually go with this rigging. But of course, it wasn't by far the only one. You have seen two more riggings, and back in the era, there were a lot of them. There were mixed riggings, there were uh, Sebex, there were Polacros, there were um, Brigantines, there were Gaff rigging ships. There were a lot of different styles. In naval action, currently, we have these three. Probably with time, we will see more. And in due time, when they come, well, I will speak about them. But so far, these are the ones that are in the game. So, now we have seen the different types of rigging that are in the game. 
which of course probably in another video will explain in more detail, naming all the sails, naming the masts, etc. So you get a good grasp of, of nautical terms. Um, now that we have seen all the different wings we have in the game, let's see the polars. What's a polar? What do I mean when I'm speaking about polars? Well, the polar is um, essentially a word that describes where uh, your ship's best uh, sailing wind point is sitting at. Now, before I'm going to uh, I, before I explain that, let's see first. Well, the different uh, um, zones of your ship, uh, the wind might be coming from. Now, picture this compass as if your ship is lined alongside the north-south axis. Okay, so your bow is where the N is, your stern is in where the S is. If the wind is coming directly in front from from in front of you and down to maybe 20 degrees to its angle. Varied with sip, varied with rigging, but let's, for an illustrative purpose, let's let's say this, okay? Um, if the wind is coming directly from you, from the nose of your sip, or slightly to an angle, but very small angle, uh, you will be in an upwind situation. The wind will be up from you, and it's coming from your nose. If the wind is coming from the front and an angle a wide angle, maybe 45 degrees to your left or right, you are in a close hold situation. So close hold means that, well, the wind is coming from the front and the side. Um, if the wind is coming straight from your side, to an angle maybe, and as you can see these are areas, you are in beam reads. If the wind is coming from behind you and aside, you will be in broad reads. If the wind is coming directly behind you, you are in downwind or in a running situation. It's also called that way. Now, the big thing is that these polars that you see here are just for illustrative purposes. Each ship will have its own upwind close hold, beam reads, broad reads, and downwind angles. And they will vary a lot from ship to ship. Some ships will have a much smaller upwind uh, angle, others will have a huge upwind angle. Some ha will have a close hole which is bigger or smaller, same the wind reads, the broad reads, etc. This is just for illustrative purposes. Now we have seen three rigs in naval action. We are going to see them in action. I'm going to actually show them to you so you can see exactly how polars affect your ship. But to well do a initial description, let's say that the um, fore and aft rigged ships uh, have their best polar usually, usually again depending a little of the, a, a bit about the ship and the ringing it was using, but usually their best polar is in the beam reads. That means that they are the fastest when the wind is coming from the side. They are very good close hauled. They are very good when the wind is coming from the front and from an angle. Um, they are not good upwind. No ship is good upwind. They are not good downwind because the ship won't, uh, the sails won't produce thrust if the wind is coming directly from behind. Uh, I could go into explaining the mechanics of that, but if I do, it will take a whole video, so take my word on that. And they are not really good in broad reads. I mean, the best polar of a four and a half ship is beam reads, close hauled. Broad reads is okay, uh, downwind is bad, upwind is terrible. Now, with a brig, with a brig, um, close hole is bad-ish, upwind is terrible, beam reach is pretty good, broad reach is excellent, downwind is not good. Now, I'm going to explain why. Close hole is okay is because the brig is pretty light, it actually behaves very well close hole Upwind is terrible because all ships are bad upwind. Uh, beam reach is really good because, well, the sail plan of the of the ship reacts very well to the wind coming from an angle. Broad reach is the best because it has a square sails, and the square sails take the most wind when it's coming from behind and an angle. And downwind is not really good. This is an intuitive because people think that having the wind just behind you is the best position. But if you think about this, it and the geometry of of um, well the wind. 
If you have the wind coming from straight behind you, the first mast you have behind you, which is the missing mast, or the, well, in a big is the main mast, but the aftermost mast sails will take all the wind and will shadow the wind from the four sails. So will we, you will be taking a lot of thrust in your back mast, but the four mast or masts won't take a lot of, of wind because they are masked by the other one. So broad reach, the best one, beam reach, very good. Uh, close hauler, mm, not really good. Uh, upwind, horrible. Downwind, not really good. That's for a brig. And finally, for a um, ship, a uh, ship, ship with um, square sails and uh, three or more masts. For them, it's actually very close to the brig, but a little bit too, mo too extreme. For a ship, um, square ship. Uh, a square rigged ship, sorry, for a square rigged ship, the best polar is broad bit. Uh, wind coming from behind and an angle. Being rich, it's mm, acceptable but not really good. Close hauled is pretty bad, upwind is terrible, and downwind is not good. Of course, again, I'm making a huge generalization here. There will be a ship, ship uh, rigged. Uh, square sailors, which are really good in a beam reach, because well, for the general shape of the hull, the particular set of sails, whatever. But in general, you have to keep in mind that th that kind of ship, the broad reach was the best polar, the beam reach was okay but not great, close hauled was really not good, upwind was terrible, and downwind not really good as well. So well, the descriptions are here. Let's see the in-game actual mechanics. We are. This is a for and aft ship. This is a yacht. Uh, the reason why it is uh, called a yacht is because, well, you can see from above, all the sails are put from the front to the rear. They are aligned in that direction, and we are moving in beam reach. Beam reach means that the wind is coming directly from the side, and as you can see, we are moving at a pretty insane 15.8 knots. It's actually pretty fast. It's actually faster than real life. Uh, I think these little ships are a little bit um, too fast for their own good, but whatever. So let's start moving upwind. Let's go close hold it, maybe 45 degrees of the wind. And see what happens there. Well, we are setting some of our speed. We are going to come closer to maybe 11 knots, 10.5, 11 knots, more or less. Now, the reason for this is that, of course, the wind is not filling our sails the same way, but still we are producing a lot of thrust because of the nature of the winds and how they are deployed along the ship. And this is the second best polar of the ship, even while it's not the second fastest polar of the ship. And I will come to that when we see other ships and other readings. So far we are going to well turn around and go to a broad reach, which means that we are going to put the wind um, coming from behind us at an angle of maybe 45 degrees and see what happens there. So we are accelerating, we are accelerating pretty quickly actually. This um, is going to be good for maybe 15 knots. We lose some speed from the beam bridge. Some, not most, not a lot, I mean, but it's very quickly still. So you can see this is very flexible. It moves very fast in almost every direction. Um, again, this is the second fastest polar, but it's not the second best. I'll come to that when we compare this rigging with other ships. And uh, well, yeah, I guess that's um, what you get from uh, the broad reads. You can see 15.3. We lost half a knot only, which is not a lot. Uh, let's start moving the ship uh, into a running situation where the wind comes directly from behind us. Now, that's not a good position for a ship of this class. Well, <coughs> the yacht has a um, in the rent advantage, uh, because he has some square sails, most for and afters don't have square sails. So here, uh, upwind won't be downwind, sorry, won't be as bad as in in other for and afters. But this is still this is pretty bad. You can see that we have dropped already under 10 knots, and we are going to drop more if I direct it exactly yeah that way. So the AI is already shooting at me, but we are down here. We have seen all the polars of the fore and afters. Now let's take a look at the brig. 
Alrighty, here we are in a brig broad width, which is the best point. The brig you will notice that is uh, the best at broad width and um, the fastest at this point. That's because, as you can see, well, the wind is coming from this way and it's feeling all, uh, all the sails. You can see also the top look has nothing to do with the fore and aft. Uh, the sails are not aligned with the center of the ship. So, right now we are moving um, with the wind coming from an angle of 45 degrees of our stern. It's filling all the sails and that works great. So, let's move downwind. Let's put the wind directly off our back. There we go. We are directly downwind and as you can see we are setting some speed here. And that's because, as I told you in the um, comment be uh, before, well, um, those sail, the main mast, which is the aftermost one, is blocking the wind from reaching the um, foremast. Of course, some wind is going to reach there, uh, but it's not going to be as efficient as if, if you were in an angle. So that's why we are slower. We are two knots slower, actually, than in broad reads, which is actually a pretty significant loss. As you can see, it's not really a good uh, direction to be in. It's a not, not a good polar. So now let's keep on turning, uh, use some manual sails to improve the turn rate and go to beam reads. Directly 90 degrees of the wind. There we are. And as you can see we are actually slower. We are at 10 knots. We are going to keep this speed maybe accelerate a little bit but not that. You can see this is already slower than even downwind. Uh, it's still a pretty good polar. It's not bad at all. Um, you keep most of your speed, that's okay. Um, actually, the brig per um, performs pretty well uh, in beam bridge. But when we start moving um, upwind, well, this was a close hauled situation for the Jack. But it's not. It's not a close hauled situation for us here because if you see the sails are actually backing the, sail, the wind is actually acting against them they are not feeling them at all we are actually upwind and that's what I meant in the compass section that the angles I was showing were different from rigging to rigging the upwind degree is um, angle is much larger in, in a square ship than in a fore and aft and as you can see, we are setting most of your sp of our speed. We are moving at 3.8 and going down. That's because, of course, the sails are actually backing us. It's, uh, they are going to stopping us and the wind is not feeling them. So, yeah, very poor performance. Actually, to go close hauled in a brig, you have to point your nose maybe 60, 70 degrees on the wind. And there, you are still going to hit 7 knots at most. Um, 5 uh, at 60 degrees at 70, maybe 7 knots. So here we are already close hauled. This is not being read, this is close hauled. While for a yacht, this will be um, being read. Uh, not a good polar at all, you can see how slow it is. And that's why I meant that the second best polar for a yacht, uh, for an aft, is um, actually close hauled because they are so much, much, much quicker in that polar than any other ship you will find with the square sails. So, well, yes, as you can see, well, uh, polar, uh, if we are 70 degrees of the wind, we are accelerating to maybe 7 knots and we are not going to be faster than that. So, yeah, let's take a look at the um, square rigger and see how it behaves. So, we are aboard uh, one of the most iconic ships uh, in existence today. It's still afloat and it's still in commission, USS Constitution. Um, well, this is a um, um, square rigged sail ship, which means has three or more masts. In this case, it's three. They are deployed, well, as you can see from the top in perpendicular to the axis of the ship. We have some jibs, we have even a um, bowsprit square sail and we have a spanker. And we are going downwind and we are going insanely fast, 15.2 knots. The constitution was a very fast ship. Um, the promise wasn't really good at maneuvering because such long ship was not made for 
turning. It was made for speed. Um, anyway, you can see we are going 15.3. We are going to eventually, if we keep this direction to accelerate, maybe to 15.5. Which of course means that the best polar of the ship is broad grid. Now let's go upwind and see what happens there. I mean, let's go downwind. Let's go running. Let's put this mm, wind directly behind us. So as you can see, we have lost some speed. It's actually not going to be a huge deal, a huge deal mostly because the missing mass doesn't have a core sail, which is blocking the wind to come in forward. But it's still, you are setting maybe one knot, one knot and a half actually one knot and a half and makes little sense. I mean, if you are going to go directly downwind, why no, not, well, angling your ship a little bit and getting a little bit of extra speed from the wind coming from an angle. Um, so yeah, this is downwind. So if now we go to uh, beam bridge, which is going to take a little while, and I'm actually going to use some manual cells here because otherwise it's going to take forever. As I told you, the ship doesn't like to turn a lot. So long and so um, thin is not a good combination for turning. We are going to come across to a beam bridge and steady ourselves on it. And you will see that here we are already slowing down significantly. A beam bridge uh, is not extremely good. We have lost maybe five knots, which is more than what we lost in the brig. So as you can see, well, a brick is better in a beam situation than a constitution, for instance. Um, relatively speaking, of course, because we are still faster than what a brick was going then. But anyway, the polar is okay. Is I mean, you can maneuver pretty well in in beam reads with a square ship, uh, but it's not the best. But the problem really starts to show when you try to go up with. Uh, even at, we are at 70 degrees of the wind only and we are going to set a lot of speed here only by 10 degrees um, simply said the wind doesn't feel our, our sails enough it's not acting with a strong enough force to move us up I mean we are at 7.5 and going down um, and again I insist that's why I say that the second best polar for a for an after rig ship is cross hauled even while it's not the second fastest polar for them. Uh, in general, it's time to go to a close hole situation. I mean, you can see that we are maybe 60 degrees of the wind and we are slowing down to a crawl. Uh, square sails don't like going upwind at all, not close hole it. Um, because really they don't produce thrust in that situation. So you have to keep the, in account that for your maneuvers. You have to keep in account, well, the polars of your ship, uh, where does it perform better according to the rigging it uses. Again, this is just for novel action. We only have three different kinds of rigging in the game right now. Uh, with time, more rings will come where we will have Sebex, which, are for, which actually are for and after, but whatever. We we'll have polacres, which are kind of a mixture between fore and aft and conventional square riggers. We will have um, gaff ships. We will have massive schooners. I'm guessing. I don't know. Uh, there are a lot of different ships that can be added. We will have brigantines, which are kind of a um, mix between a brig and a fore and aft. It's there are a lot of different riggings. I mean, and. Each one will be particular and will have very unique sailing abilities. So, yeah, well, that's the point of this video, teaching you how the three different readings of um, naval action right now in the game work, depending on where the wind is coming from. So, well, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something, which I guess is the point of it. Uh, even if you don't play in a black action and you are not playing too, I think this is one of the things that is really, really, really cool to learn. After all, if you think about it, uh, humans move on the seas for 450 years using this means of propulsion. And I think it's a pretty sad thing that um, such an art, because it's a, it is an art, is becoming lost. So, well, I really hope you enjoyed, I really hope you learned something, and as always, thank you very much for watching, and see you later!